Okay, so welcome to the last session of the afternoon. On Monday, of course, we had the Zoom session and we really wanted to have an opportunity to discuss in person on observables. Now, it might seem a bit ambitious to talk about observables and microstructure, but I think it's a really important conversation that we have, like beyond the standard model in particle physics, we really should be bending our thoughts in this direction. And of course, it's rather hard, rather, um, you know, you, one might be skeptical, but I think really we need to be thinking about these ideas. So anyway, I'm gonna, with that, I'm gonna thank Daniel for organizing Monday and also for organizing this. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Uh, good. So we have, uh, I collected, let's say, five panel members. Uh, Joseph will join us too. Um, and so um, the idea is to collect a bunch of ideas, a discussion, questions, let's say, from different corners, right? We're coming from string theory, some of us coming from fuzzballs, coming from not fuzzballs, uh, and coming from phenomenology as well. And so um, yeah, just I think since it's a discussion, everybody else should also feel free to join in. We have the cube to throw around, so maybe, uh, maybe, maybe let the let's let the panelists say their little, uh, you know, present their little slide, and then we can discuss those things, and then move on to the next panelist, etc. I've also seen that uh, certain panelists want to answer each other's uh, questions, so this is also great. Uh, there's already discussion on the on the slides. Uh, maybe unless anybody wants to immediately start, I would just break the symmetry by letting Paolo start, because, just because it's his uh, first. Did you want to start, Paolo? No, 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 okay. Just because it's his first slide uh, yeah, that's, that's on there. He was the first to send the slide, yeah. And, and so I just say. Uh, <laughs> okay, fine. thanks. So, so there are a lot of questions here. Some of them are uh, kind of pro provocative. So I don't know if you want to go through all of them. Uh, so the first one that I put there uh, is a kind of trivial thing, but uh, on Monday uh, on Zoom, uh, there, there was some discussion and some comment about this reflectivity. So I wanted to, to clarify a, a trivial point. Um, I think there was this comment that reflectivity equal one seems crazy, uh, but uh, I mean, in fact, I would argue that any object other than a black hole has reflectivity equal one. I mean, sometimes people are uh, misled in thinking that this thing is reflecting, say, gravitational waves. But in fact, this is just because we are looking at the problem in a 1D perspective. So reflectivity equal one just really means that gravitational waves are almost not interacting with the object and go through, right? Um, so in this sense, if you take, I don't know, a neutron star or whatever uh, object that is reasonable, uh, the reflectivity is actually very close to unity to uh, an excellent per, uh, uh, accuracy. For a black hole, instead, it's zero. So there is really this divide, which is, uh, which is interesting. Of course, then there might be other ways to uh, reduce this reflectivity, uh, maybe breaking the symmetry. And there is a comment by, by Josef later. Or, yeah, I mean, exciting degrees of freedom, it's another possibility. But I just wanted to tell that. Uh, if you don't include this, a uh, perfect fluid uh, neutron star, whatever compact, has equal one reflectivity. So it's not crazy at all. Okay. Uh, you have a comment? No. Well, I was just going to, uh, I think appropriate later, but I mean, fuzzballs or oh, microstate geometries can produce high levels of what seem to be absorption through stringy effects. But we can come to that later. I don't, I don't want to interrupt your flow. So go for it. Uh, okay. So any. Any comment on this? Maybe I have a slight comment, but actually, well, okay. W would you prefer to just go through your stuff, or do you want to just uh, pause a minute? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, okay. it's a question. I mean, when you say one-dimensional, you uh, you're considering a spherical symmetric problem because otherwise there would be scattering in. Uh, oh, okay, that, that so, was only... Yeah, I think that Joseph has a comment on this. So if we can skip uh, uh, to to his slide uh, there. Uh, yeah, so do we want to comment on the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, I think it's, it's a perfect overlap. Uh, there's something actually you can get reflectivity also. You can get the, this thing to mimic a black hole. We have some examples of a solution with, with a long throat. If you have a wave coming in, it doesn't know it's not a black hole, it just starts falling down the throat. And then at some point it realizes and you know, wakes up and comes out again. But that's looks like looks like absorption. So that's another way to make this work. But for Schwarzschild, I don't know how to make this work. So. Okay, uh, can I make my comment now? Sure. So basically, you, it, it, what Emil and I showed recently was that if you chuck in, a, chuck in a particle into a very deep microstate geometry, the multipoles that are in it 
get greatly amplified by the ultra relative speed and the particle figures out it's a string. And then what happens is the tidal forces hit the string scale, the thing then expands to large size, energy is taken out of the central mass mo center of mass motion to make the thing fuzzy, it then rebounds to a much lower height and then it oscillates. So even though a microstate geometry looks like it's a perfectly reflecting object because stuff goes in and comes back out, in fact, the stringy nature of the matter thrown in means it effectively scrambles into the stringy modes in the bottom of the throat. So I don't think even micro, you know, the deep microstate geometries are in any way reflective. They, they eat stuff up. That's that's true. To, do, to, do, to get something that is not extremely weak, you have to really uh, work. You have something with the large redshift, have uh, lots of entropy. Have something you, you don't special. need a lot of entropy. You, all you need is something with a very high redshift so that the tidal forces hit the string scale. And, yeah. and, that, and that, that, then it just scrambles. Yeah. But if you have very high redshift, then by the two cardinals, you can stack. I mean, the entropy of the envelope, you can think about it as very large. So they are really, right? You can stack lots of modes in a high redshift group. True, but uh, anyway, so it doesn't, you know, microstate geometries are not reflective is the broader one to say. Sorry, um, can, you, can you pass the cube on? Yeah, sure. yeah, okay. uh, yeah, just a question, I guess, to, to what Nick commented, uh, like, isn't the, the idea that these stringy modes that get trapped there eventually do come out like in so they come out with some sort of like hawking radiation process modeled as a that's what you hope okay so it's not like 100 percent like absorption obviously like right okay any, any more comments on the reflectivity? We can... Yeah. No, can I comment on something? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's partially related, but there is a comment that Joseph made on Monday, I think, to Vitor. And I think I agree with you um, about this fact of mode mixing and super radiance. In fact, this is key also there. If your sort of surface that reflects things does not have the same symmetry as the geometry, uh, in principle, you have the effect, but I mean, the energy does not pile up, so you never... Um, I mean, extract energy enough for the process to be to be effective. So you have this effect, but it will be highly suppressed. And and for the same reason, for the I mean, I agree with what uh, uh, Nick just said. But if you go back one slide, I think I can, I can do it. I have a... Oh, I yeah. oh, oh, wow. no, no. Yeah, the, yeah, no, right yeah, this one here. So this is just to show that if you really just take a classical uh, microstate geometry, there is this mode mixing. So what I'm showing there is the gravitational way, the scar signal of a perturbation in a geometry that is deformed. And initially the, the, the perturbation is spherical, so it's an L equal zero. And what you get there is that you excite L equal two because of what Yossi was saying. And the L equal zero echoes, which are the reflections, are highly suppressed compared to the toy spherical state just because of this. I mean, just because there is energy that goes from L equal zero to L equal two, from L equal two to L equal four. And of course, the more complicated the geometry is, the more depression is uh, is important, and this is, I mean, not even considering what what, what Nick was saying. It's really just a classical phenomenon due to the to the to the symmetry breaking of the background. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's good. I was going to do it. <laughs> then you feed me. Um, okay, do uh, Paulo? Do you want to go on? Uh, uh, so your next question. Number one. Let's, let's go over this. Yeah. What is? Uh, no, the, so I have this uh, provocative. Ah, yeah. Well, actually, this is my uh, typical question when. Uh, uh, no, this is typical. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, especially I think on day two, we were discussing about observables uh, of given microstates. Uh, and well, I mean, shadows, uh, uh, multiple moments, ring down, et cetera. Uh, but on the other end, these are atypical states. So if we are discussing here observability, I was wondering how 
much is this really relevant for observations, given the fact that in reality, these states are atypical compared to instead what one should, uh, should do in practice. And I don't know, I really don't have any answer to this. I would like to uh, hear your opinion. Joseph, do you want to take it? <laughs> my feeling is that uh, again, this again in uh, to the uh, to the uh, argument. It's, it's, you know, so essentially, there are some quantities when you have a typical when you have a typical microstate. There are some quantities uh, which, when you average, they should give you the black hole result. So then we can say that okay, those quantities, you know, it's useless to study them in a typical microstate because in a typical one, uh, you know, they will give you the same as the black hole result. But some other quantities are not. And in particular, uh, for example, if you look at the mass gap, uh, the mass gap uh, variation that you understand system of phenomenal you know, love um, in the black hole solution is zero. And in all the microstate geometries, and you know, in open the CFT, you have a CFT in a box of the charge, the mass gap is always one over another pi. And you can see it in the geometries. And even if you superpose them like crazy, you still have a one over another pi mass gap. You cannot get rid of that. And that's that's, that's linked to Ben's to, to Ben's point that you know, two-point functions, for example, when you as when you calculate them in a, in a certain geometry, they, do, they, they don't average, they don't give you the thermal average, they give you something different. So, in a sense, the whole purpose of the game is that, as far as I understand it, we have a typical, we have some states, some, some solutions. We use them to construct as much stuff as possible. And then we ask the question is this stuff going to average out, or is this stuff, does this stuff have any chance to persist? Okay. For, and then, if it has a chance to persist, then we say yes. So, for example, two point functions, you know, mass gaps, for example, I'm sure, you know, I'm willing to, you know, in the DOLD5 system, even if you don't have the typical microstates, I'm willing to put my hand in fire, you know, if you have it, you know, five years from now, the, you can have a mass gap which is one over the number five. There's no way. So, that's a universal feature. So, you use the atypical guys to understand the universal features. Uh, but then, there's a the big question, I think, in the game is what's going to average out and what's not going to average out? Mm -hmm. And you know, you guys in Roma, we had this debate last year about the multiples and mm -hmm. about the multiple moments. That, you know, you're hoping that one, some of the multiples are going to be bigger than the black hole multiples, and then you know, we found that in the in the one of the black hole they are not. So you know, multiples, for example, on one quantity. I was also hoping again from all my heart, multiples are going to be you know different and systematically different, and they're not average out. I mean, it's a difficult decision. I hope for right. Roma. But actually, I'm even per, per, perhaps more uh, critical uh, towards this because so suppose that you find that in this uh, large class of solutions, the multiple moments are all like larger, which is not the case. But suppose that it is the case. This is anyway a subset of the microstates that you can have, right? So, I mean, you will never be sure that uh, if, if you had the entire ensemble, they eventually average out. Then I can be sure enough. So, for example, for the gap, you know, I know I have a CFT expectation which is matched perfectly by what I get in the bulk. And even if in the bulk I don't have all the possible states and I have, you know, I have a subset, it matches exactly what I expect in the CFT. So I see no way, no, I see, I see no reason for the you know, play based on that. But I mean, there's certainly, I mean, okay. Well, we can do what we can, right? But there's also statistical arguments besides knowing all of the microstates. You could do, you can have statistical arguments that show you that, okay, a typical state or the average state should have, you know, all the one point functions should wash out basically, right? So the question is, you know, do we have. So then, oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Very simple question. How do I know a priori? Because I think it's really a question to this, if I understand. How do I know a priori which quantity do average out and which one not? So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you guys, I mean, you know, for the multiples, you know, you're hoping it, double, it doesn't average out. And, and you know, I was also hoping it doesn't average out. Oh, that's why I started looking with Daniel on this. But then, you know, we found that, you know, it's both below and the, uh, you know, right. black is both below and above the black. Yeah, no, but my, my problem is, in order to <laughs> even talk about averaging out, don't you need the full uh, no, uh, ensemble? Otherwise, maybe then what? Oh, sure. Like ben. To yeah, thanks. So th there are claims in the in the literature. There are some papers from two thousand and five by Baras Romanian and collaborators. Um, closer, okay. Um, where it's claimed that um, most microstates will behave like typical states, and most probes or almost all probes will not distinguish them, um, in the sense that you will get the typical values up to exponentially suppressed uh, corrections. 
So there are some examples of uh, atypical operators. Um, so Yosef was referring to two-point functions. Well, in general, most two-point functions, again, will not discriminate effectively between microstates. But if you separate them extremely long in time, then you get a very special operator that does, uh, that does separate uh, some of the states. Indeed. Indeed, but you may have to wait really long, uh, depending on uh, on the parameters of the of the model, I guess. So I think for if you take some random operator, chances are it will not discriminate. But there are uh, a small number that uh, that will indeed. So can I can I comment? Uh, so okay, so yeah, so I think, but this this is a calculation where you take uh, a two point function of something very light, right? So basically, you're 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 hitting the black hole, but you're 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 just stroking it maybe right you're not really hitting it and so I, I always wonder and this is sort of what i what i think uh is relevant for for gravitational physics like merger physics as well is when you think of a two-point function where you're really hitting it with something that's uh that starts to be parametrically uh like you can't you can't neglect the back reaction for example then maybe you will see something that that's uh right so so the, in my mind maybe the the point is if you're if your black hole is say, let's say order uh, n squared uh, mass or something like this, if you hit it with something that's order one, uh, then you will have to wait order n squared to see a result. So to see something that's different than, than the, the black hole value, if you have a typical microstate. If you hit it with something that's order n, then maybe you only need to wait you know, order n time or something like that to, to get, a, get something out of that. It, it's not clear if, uh, if that's known. Right? Yeah. Exactly, and in real experiment, you order order n squared, so you immediately see something different. Well, maybe. The key is what you see. Clearly, you don't see one of these operators that you have some complicated experience. So you need to use the language that's appropriate for that to find out. But the key is what you see in the experiment. You really have a high amount of Maybe it doesn't give it the thermodynamic average. Yeah, but it's just, I mean, it's again, it's a provocative. Uh, the French word is sulfurous. sulfurous. <laughs> well, I, I think the, the claims don't necessarily depend on, on having the black, black hole geometry. So you can, you can make similar claims just based on, uh, on, on statistical arguments using a dual field theory, for instance, and argue that most states will be like uh, typical states and that uh, it's hard to distinguish them. Uh, using almost all sure, operators. But, but, but then, you know, in terms of distinguishing, you know, for, for example, if I compute car microstates, you know, 10 years from now, we're rich and famous, uh, you know, we compute car microstates and you get a lot of them and so on and so forth. And then I say, okay, the core quadrupole moment and the core, the core dipole moment, you know, the, the black hole are, are something like that. But if I have the microstates, you know, they give me a different number. Then I would say, okay, the different number of the microstate is the real number of the physics and the curl result is just some piece of garbage which starts because I'm using scatter solution which should be described as a, as a variety state. That's, That's it. I mean, Nick, Nick would like to. Sorry, sorry, Paolo, can I, can I let Nick? The, you know, I think it's all a matter of what you what the observable is you're interested in. So, what is supergravity good at? Supergravity is really good at giving you the average hydrodynamic effects of a strongly coupled quantum system. So, I'd say, I'd say if you're going to learn something from, okay, fuzzballs are impossible to calculate, but that's what I think 
we t I certainly believe is probably the resolution of the information paradox. But I can't compute fuzzables, but I can compute microstate geometries. And in a microstate geometry, that encapsulates all the long range, low mass inf inf uh, interactions of the underlying string theory, because it's mass the mass of sector, and it's the full theory of that mass of sector. And so anything that's going to be captured reliably by that, I might have confidence that I could observe. And so, you know, the celebrated example in, is, of course, in QCD, where you calculate the entropy, so the viscosity of entropy ratio. Some average hydrodynamic properties, I think, can and will be deduced from supergravity. I don't know whether you'll find it from an individual microstate, but as Ben says, individual microstates geometries will give you some data. But if you're looking for the universal things, I think you have supergravity can still give you some of those. You just have to pick the right observables. Yeah, well, I guess that then, then it boils down to what is the right observable. Because... Well, I, I think hydrodynamic things are probably, you know, from the, the quark gluon plasmas, we know some hydrodynamic quantities are, are well uh, described by supergravity. Oh, said multiples, you know. Yeah, maybe, I, I don't know. That's the discussion. Ago, Two years ago, I just said multiples are. <laughs> Yeah, let's take micro, um, multiples just, I mean, just an example, as an example, okay? Uh, and suppose that in a few years from now, you have the, the, the care microstates. Um, well, first, the question is, do you have all of them or part of them? And my, my question is, very practical. So if you go to an experiment, you know, Lisa, ET, whatever, or some future thing. Uh, Lisa is a future thing. <laughs> or even even more, I mean, something that we don't even, <laughs> no, I wanted to say something that we don't even think about right now. Uh, so I, I don't want to be limited by, I say, the sensitivity of current or future experiments, but really as a conceptual issue. Um, how, I mean, how do you convince them that the, the multiple moments of that particular microstate or family of microstates are worth looking at as compared to what has been already done, is already done in, in this collaboration, like parametrizing deviations from care, like the multiple moment is not care, it's a deviation, or there is a, a equatorial symmetry breaking or things like that. I mean, in a more agnostic way, given the fact that I mean, you don't control the entire uh, quantity that you want to observe. You see what I mean? Well, I think what you're asking is two questions, if I, if I can. Uh, so, I mean, you're asking for, so first of all, there's the question of, you know, what can we look for? Uh, and so you said something like, well, you can just parametrize uh, deviations from quadrupole or something like this and go look for that. And, and, then, and then the second question is, what should we, what should we expect, right? And so these are not necessarily this, these are not the same question, right? And so yeah. I think what, what we should look for is, is, a, is a more of a phenomenology que phenomenological question. And so what we can expect is of course going to tell us what we should go look for, right? If, so if I say, well, I, I think, you know, equatorial symmetry is gonna be broken, then I need to think of, well, where, where can I see this, right? As a signal. Um, and then I also need to tell you ideally, you know, how much it should be broken in general, or give you at least some kind of a range for where, you know, it ideally we would say, okay, these are the kind of signals that you can go look for. And this is about the strength that it should be. Right. It's not, and, and, and then you say, okay, we can, we can look for, you know, deviations from this and this and this, and then that fits within the model, I guess, something like that. Um, well, what I was saying is that yeah. actually there is a problem uh, of averaging. So we, uh, unless we know, as uh, Paul was saying, the full lot of uh, microstates, uh, how can no, we right. be sure that our player? So that was my crazy proposal. Why don't we focus a little bit on uh, completely a crazy model like two charge system where we we know the microstates and we can uh, try and make? It's not a, a phenomenological prediction, but at least the device. Uh, methods for including uh, observables like uh, multivolts or uh, log numbers or uh, and this is uh, i mean definitely stringy because uh, that, that's no supergravity analog of a two charge system uh, it has uh, entropy uh, and we know uh, clearly it has nothing to do with uh, the phenomenology of question but it is a, a methodological uh, how do we address uh, the averaging of uh, over mango states. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I would say it's fully supergravity. All no. the two charges will be only five. All the two charges. But, but, 
but in general it's not no in general momentum winding if you want or whatever yeah, I have the system sure sure but you know i have the i have the dr system where it's also programmable so you know my program was there because i'm a system operator it's not i mean ADHD system. yes in, indeed so, so. <laughs> oh No, so they're saying that for typical states, it's gravity is a virtual breaking. But you know, I can compute, you know, I can look at entropy divided by five, and then, you know, I'm in the supergravity range. So if I don't have to be exactly typical, but you know, I can just do like, you know, entropy divided by two or entropy divided by five, I still have the two degrees of freedom. I still ask the process as much more. Yeah, that. sure. I I, I'm uh, simply saying uh, that in the uh, momentum winding description, we really know uh, the, the single microstate as a vertex operator in the, in the theory, we can. Uh, start asking this question really in terms of uh, uh, string theory and uh, even scatter to two of these states and see what happens I mean, uh, uh, clearly the, the, there will be uh, some uh, random choice of uh, you know combination of uh, oscillators that uh, account for the amp to be is, i think there what will happen is very is, is very clear because it's a supersymmetric system with a huge modular space you know essentially any curve is a solution yes so then if you stick if, if you put some energy you have a modular space of dimension n1 and 5 all directions are democratic so the energy is just going to spin everywhere it will go into all the all the possible Fourier uh, modes. I, i'm not sure about that that's my point so, uh, so maybe this is a good calculation uh, to do. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, it's just a clearly, it's, it's got completely nothing to do with black holes, but at least it gives a methodological uh, uh, approach to uh, the question averaging. I mean, three charge system, we don't know the, the full lot of microstates. And, uh, but I think uh, the physics of the three charge, I'm assuming, is that you know, it's the definitely system, because you have back point. reaction, you can mimic the black hole much better. I mean, the, the two charge system can be tricky because. In some duality frames, it looks like a black hole. It behaves correctly. In some other duality frames, it doesn't. So you know, it's a it's a strange, it's a strange beast that you trust. It's it's a good toy model, but you know, I think if you want to get black hole physics, you know, no, no, let's separate the two issues. Uh, one is the phenomenological issue. How what do we expect for uh, multiple moments of a, a, a real uh, dark object, which is not a black hole, or uh, the tidal lump numbers, or the quasi normal mode? And this is a question. The other question is. How suppose that I give you, as uh, Paul was saying, all the microstates of uh, Kerr black hole. Which one should I? How should I average uh, this? Uh... this sorry. Somewhat different direction, but one of the things I took away from the, the from Vitter's talk, which was I think was cool, was I the know. fact that um, Emery's can produce these resonances inside the inside the photon ring and things like this. So I thought. You know, a question might be to reverse the thing. Say, okay, suppose I've got an emery coming in with a very low frequency. What low frequency resonances might a microstate geometry have that might get excited? So maybe your multipoles will get biased into some particular quadrupole that wants to do this. Or, but I think that's an interesting question we might think about, which is to go the other way. If you've got an emery coming in and it's got some resonant frequency and the structure inside the microstate geometry, maybe it's going to vibrate that structure or do something cool. I don't know. I've not thought about it until I saw Victor with his talk. So I, I would say, without answering the question at all, right? Uh, I would say that this is again, right? There's there's again sort of two things that we need to do, and one is 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 to study what we have and to understand, uh, for example, this. Like, okay, I take a microstate geometry, I have an emery. What happens that's different than a black hole? Uh, and then we need to we need to use what we have as insights, and then see you know what kind of signals can we find in in Emery's that are not necessarily very model dependent, right? And and, and this is I think a, a separate question. It, it is, so, but, I, but yeah. I thought the Emery th resonances are just a nice way of trying to amplify very sure. certain things. So, so. maybe may, okay. So resonance maybe what you find is you find some resonances, and this depends on the structure of the microstate. Right, and then okay. So what you want to take from that is not that okay. I'm going to have a resonance exactly at this, you know, this peak or whatever, but that there are resonances, and then we need to translate into that into some kind of model independent framework of finding resonances uh, within within something. And we also need to uh, answer the question: Well, is this something that is atypical, or does this continue when we go to typical states, etc.? Yeah. So maybe um, I, I don't think. We or it works anymore so i uh, know it does it does, it does no it's fine um so i don't know if there's any did yosef did you want to comment now or no, no, no okay no. so maybe I, I don't know if Paolo, did you want to continue with this okay 
I can also go on to, to Massimo's or, or someone else's. Uh, As you prefer. Yeah, maybe yeah. Yeah, we can. Okay, take so one more I will let. You have a question about why his photo starts. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, I no. want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just about, I mean, okay, but it's just Here's my bias against Posa starts, if you want to. Joseph, did you want to? Yes. No, but, I mean, Ah, so it's it's take no number one. No, what you know, it's about so it's about so okay. I, I was just saying that you know we're not the a high energy collision. We're always from a black hole. Uh -huh, okay, what yeah. I was saying is that is that you know when you have I mean both in supergravity when you have for example two charge solutions. If I take two charge two two, two charge supercells which have again huge amount of masses degrees of freedom, when I collapse them, I don't need to form a black hole. I am uh, these degrees of freedom can just combine and they can excite. They can but they can make my object bigger. So supergravity is very captures a huge amount of degrees of freedom. It's very it's very like it's very hard to see because you know you think supergravity. Okay, I just have some fluxes and you know gravity plus a few fields. But if you look at a non perturbative object in supergravity like a soliton, which is you know what these two trans super cubes are, and you take two of the solitons, they have a huge amount of freedom. I mean, you know the supergravity solutions are parameters of an arbitrary function, and when you hit two of them. Um, you know, they can just go and you know, they can become something very big and they're not from a black hole, they don't need to form a black hole. So, this would um, be yeah. very strange because the black hole has a much bigger entropy than the combined solution. So yes, no, but no, no, it's talking about the, these two charge systems, uh, yes, two charge, yeah. two charge, two charge is still not, there's no would, black hole. Uh, I mean, no, 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 but Paolo's argument was that anything he collapses if there's high enough energy to form a black hole. Yeah, and I, I, I will retain this uh, this thing. So what, what I agree with what you said that you could form other solutions, number two solution, whatever. But my point is, if your uh, collisional energy is high enough in a supergravity theory, eventually you will form a black hole. No. It's essentially hoop yes. conjecture. No, it's zero. The first yeah. no, no, no. black hole is but zero. Yosef, it's you're thinking you're thinking of supersymmetric solutions. No, I'm thinking of okay. I can I can I, I can do near extreme. I have a D only five system. No, but but With he's, say, he, he's saying he's saying he's throw more energy in. Yeah. Yes, even worse because I have a phase space. There's a phase space when I have like you know arbitrary curves. To make a black hole, I need all these and you know the curve can be anything you want. The black hole corresponds to this curve collapsing into a point. To get the black hole, I need all these curves, this super mega big curve which moves all over the place to become a point. You can dump as much energy into this, it will just become bigger no, and no. bigger. But this is to again, this hole, you're, it will just, it, it will you're using be... supersymmetry again. No, this yes, is near yes, you are. This is near, near supersymmetric. But yes, but he's saying you have a very high energy collision of these two, let's say, supersymmetric, otherwise supersymmetric guys, very high energy collision. And at that point, what you expect is that there are high curvatures and you go out of the phase space of, of, of supergravity. I mean, this is not a, yeah, this is not a crazy thing. Non, uh, the, the, the BTS was a not uh, BTS in the Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. The, so, right, right. So they're not so supersymmetric the, together. The, yes, the, yes, yes, yes. The, 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 the it's not right, sorry. The, the two separate ones are supersymmetric. Once they separate they into and their Schwarzschild. Right. They, it's as simple as this. Schwarzschild, the the phase space for forming a black hole is much much bigger than forming right. so anything so else Joseph, so Joseph, what, if the laws of physics are what we know then this no, but they, but they're, they're, but the way that, that the way that this is solved let's say in the fuzzball proposal is that you will tunnel into another into a fuzzball but this fuzzball will not be a nice uh, semi-classical supergravity that geometry. I'm willing to accept. Yes, it yes, but, matter, but, but, but this, this is why I, is there, there's no. I mean, there's no uh, tension. No, no, no. no but, uh, so, but the tunneling, the tunneling, indeed. The, when I have point particles, I have electrons. You know, I don't know. Start hitting each other. Then I can tunnel into the space of microstate geometry, which right. would give you this thing. But if I already have microstate geometry, if I'm already in that phase space, so there's a phase space of like a normal particle existing, like you know. Empty space, you know, the electrons and you know, low energy particles in these rooms. And and then I have I have this extra matter which appears in if, if I have black holes, I have this extra possible degrees of freedom again, huge number of them, and so on. If I collapse two of these guys, which are again supergravity solutions, supergravity solitons against each other, I'm already in that phase space. So I don't need to, to tunnel again. You know, I, I already have the degrees yes, of freedom which make yes, the black hole. No, no, the no, kinetic yeah. energy needs to tunnel into structure. Yeah, because you have you kinetic energy. You take two energy. things that, are, that have structure, you make them very, very, very fast, and then you collide them. All of this kinetic energy gets transferred into structure of the new object. Kinetic right. energy that wants to collapse to black hole because it yes. gravitates. Yes. In yes. fact, yes. it's actually and independent of colliding. Right. Why doesn't it make much of a bit bigger and, you know, fatter and, you know, I mean, it's yes, it will, but in a quantum process, right? I mean, this is not. Uh, I don't know if it's quantum. 
Yes. I don't think I don't know if it's quantum. That's the question. I don't know. I don't see why it's quantum. I think it's the tunneling. I mean, otherwise the tunneling argument doesn't no, hold, the tunneling right? Is, no, 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 no. Tunneling is to take me from normal matter into super tubes. And but also from super tubes to more to larger phase space of super tubes, right? By the relativistic contraction, so it becomes two pancakes that do that. It's gonna that energy is gonna go into, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway. Okay. No. Okay. But, okay. Sorry. So maybe. maybe uh, if there's someone in the crowd and we don't see you, just uh, shout or something. Yeah, Bogdan, yes, please. So on while we are on the tunneling, um, so for me, the, the one of the possible ways to see something different is exactly this tunneling because that's uh, significantly different than how in GR you expect something to collapse to a black hole. And um, so I'm just wondering whether somebody has any ideas on um especially may i don't know whether that can also be done in the two charge case where we have all the states but um is it possible to somehow create some toy model where one can think of what will be something observable that uh, you can see from um <clears throat> when when you collide to uh, uh first balls and you, you get this tunneling into another first ball compared to what happens when you merge to black holes okay anyone Yes, I would also like to know the answer. Yes. Million dollar question. Doing a collision like that's impossible. So you know, but you can imagine just adding matter to a black hole. And Samir has done some calculations just in toy model, bit model extensions, and he argues that when you chuck some matter in, it actually makes the phase space sufficiently big to encode all that data. But in terms of doing a real quantum calculation, no, not really. It's really possibly hard. I think the question is more, you know, not can you do a first principle calculation, but can you even model this yeah, process yeah. in oh. some kind of anything and then see any kind of effect that is different than GR emerging, right? I would at least estimate the time scale for this quantum tunneling. Is it possible? Because of course, if it is shorter, say, than the merger time scale before you have something that most likely mimics black hole. Afterwards, you will have a single fat ball that most likely is in, the, in distribution from black hole. So the only <laughs> hope is that the quantum tunneling happens on a time scale that you can probe. I actually disagree. But uh, it's, uh, it's related to your point number ah, two. Yes. <laughs> so we wait, we wait for that. And Oh, we discuss it now. I think, I think it's connected. I mean, what is the time scale for out of equilibrium okay. or, yeah. So, so, so my perspective on this, and I can convince you, is that if you have something that looks like a black hole in equilibrium, you'll never see any differences. Well, if you are willing to wait a hawking time, right? So it's entropy in units of RS. Or, uh, and collect all the outcoming photons and measure their uh, in their phase their phases. I mean, now in laboratories you can do three, four, right? So you're talking about so that's that's impossible. What what is possible, <coughs> and I think this is a good way of thinking about it, is that. If you excite an object, right? A black hole is essentially featureless. So when you excite it, you really excite the space time. You see quasi normal modes arriving from the space time. But if you have a structure to the black hole, you expect some differences, right? It's just like when you excite an atom. And my perspective on this is that the <clears throat> What you can measure depends on the amount of energy that actually goes into that structure. And uh, we're lucky that in uh, black hole collisions, the amount of energy is actually quite large, a few percent. Also in the inspire, you get energy infused into this internal structure. And if the amount of energy is large enough, you will see a difference. So the, the, and the key parameter is this delta E over M, right? And now 
in that case, you will only be able to see a few bits of that microstructure. You will not be able to see the actual structure of the, of the black hole. For that, you need to take it apart. You will be able to distinguish black holes. Exactly. From -black so, so, and that's something that hopefully we can do. And the expectation that, or the standard expectation that in quantum gravity, we cannot see any of that, I think is uh, misleading because the correct uh, parameter is delta E over E. And right. not so uh, there must be also the frequency right because i mean the, the frequency so fortunately i'm talking about care so in care the rotation of the of the black hole brings every stuff that goes out into that the rotation frequency which if you discover the merger you are guaranteed that it's in the window Right, because it's too, it's for gravitational wave, it's too omega. No, I have something else in mind, like to excite the this these states of the black hole out of equilibrium, you need frequencies which match the the, the, the levels. Not necessarily what well, that would be helpful, but if you, you have a, a wave coming in, right, in the below frequency. No, no, the, the gravitational wave, the initial. You have a merger, right? Something goes out and something goes into the apparent the horizon. Is comparable to the size of the object, right? So it's yes, like but but the in this case, so the energy get distributed. It's like exciting an atom. The energy get distributed among the uh, among the energy level. Most likely, is the first or second excited level that will be most uh, important in this. So if you can calculate something about the level structure of the black hole and know how an infused external energy, how it responds to an infused uh, energy, then you're in business. That's how that, but they are, it's a different branch of quasi-normal mode. And in the case of love, it's a not quasi-normal mode, but it's again a linear response to an external energy. But I think so. So the way that you get around what Ted was saying before, right? Like if you look at two point functions, you have to wait a very long time. Is you're just throwing in a lot of energy, right? It's not a small yes. perturbation so, anymore. Yes, right? so that, so that's the key, is, yeah, yes, right? If yes. you throw a small perturbation. Yes, then you have to wait a very long time. It's not you see just anything. that you have to wait a very long time. You have to pick that perturbation out of whatever is coming out. Well, sure. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so it's time and sensitivity and knowing what to look for. So that's, in terms of an actual experiment, that's something that I think is impossible. Right. So there is a, yeah. I'm not sure whether I'm, this, this is goes, conflicts with what you're saying, but you know, what, from the fuzzball microstate geometry perspective, general relativity theory is an extremely effective, but effective field theory. And so the question is, when does the effective field theory break down? Now, Samir's argument is usually, if you're going to do anything big and macroscopic with macroscopic amounts of energy, GR is great. And it's only when you start mucking around with, you know, things on the energy scale of Hawking quanta, that you're going to begin to see individual microstructure which flies in the opposite direction to what you're, you're saying, Rami, but I, I'm not... It's completely complete agreement. Okay, because, because I think, well, well Samir's not here, but I think the ba basic idea is that if you're doing macroscopic things with macroscopic amounts of energy, GR works. And no, we... GR, the whole point is that if you're looking at black holes <laughs> and you're trying to describe them dynamically, GR doesn't work. GR says that nothing happens at the horizon. You, you know that you have horizon scale correction. Horizon scale correction means that there is some structure in the black hole and external energy can excite it. So you can see deviations from GR just by this uh, argument. So GR works well outside the black hole. Okay, but but the thing the conflict with the information problem occurs when the quanta are Hawking wavelengths. So so Compton wavelengths so, the size of the horizon. Okay. So you can 
think about it. So imagine that you have a burst, a coherent burst of Hawking radiation. That would be the best way this to is, This is the, if you want to describe it in terms, in these terms, this is the kind of stuff that I was describing. Yeah, I, I think if you But been... if, it, if it's a coherent in many Hawking modes, mm -hmm. this means that you can describe them semi-classically by some yeah. kind of a, a so wave, I th I think but a, not in GR. I think a very high energy wave about whose wavelength is the order of the horizon scale might be the way to see the But that's what happens in experiments. Ben's looking very disturbed at this. That's what happens in experiments. You have a, a, a few solar masses going in to a black hole with wavelengths that is about the horizon scale. Not Compton. The, no, no. In this case, so the, there is there should be some collective excitation mm -hmm. that respond to that. I don't know what they are, but if you can calculate them, that's the key for calculating observables. So, so deviation from zero lab. Um, deviations from additional quasi-normal modes. I'll say multiples also. That's the thing which is, which yes, is shocking the, me. It's not the thing response. with multiples is that... But it is the, a response to spin. I have a Schwarzschild. Yeah. I'm spinning it. I'm putting energy into yes, it. But like the, I think about the multiples, you know, I'm not spinning empty space. I'm spinning. I mean, at least... Uh, yes, but then if I'm... So in Schwarzschild, I agree. If you have Schwarzschild spherical symmetry, it's equilibrium, and I understand that there are some arguments. But if I spin the bloody thing, I mean, if I just give it a lot of angular momentum, then why would it settle to the current result? There's, That's sorry. Yes. No, no, maybe just a comment. Uh, I think you, uh, but maybe thinking of different uh, aspects because uh, the frequency of the gravitational wave uh, is very, is even smaller than knocking, right? So th that there is no contrast, right? So there is a lot of energy, but very small frequency, right? So, um, okay, that, that, that could be still within what Samir is thinking. The other thing I was... Yeah, it's I, I discussed it with Samir. There is no yeah. contribution. Right, because the frequency is V over the distance, mm -hmm. and that, that's smaller than one over R, Schwarzschild. The other thing I wanted to understand better is uh, when you think, when you are thinking about seeing these differences due to dynamics of the black hole, you're thinking about looking at the gravitational wave, I guess. Yes. Right. So, what aspects? I mean, it's just deviation from zero tidal or tidal heating. So, so new phenomena that are not predicted by GR. Yes. Yes. And, so, and in that case, so for example, imagine that you have some internal structure to the black hole. So, it can be excited if you infuse energy into it. This can be excited. It can be excited in different ways. So, during the merger, there is a high amount of excitation that takes a long, a small time. And so you excite the black, the, this object and it decays to equilibrium using an additional branch of quasi-normal modes. It's like, like fluid modes of neutron star. Okay, this is the, the analog. Now in the lab, what happens is that as the um, in spiral around each other, some of the energy goes to, it's like polarizing an atom. It's what people call tidal heating, yes, right? A, a no, tidal heating is the, a, is the... Um, it's kind of the imaginary <coughs> part of the it, it, it's, number, Yes, right? it's the non-conservative part of this effect. But there's also a conservative part. And the conservative parts are the, the <coughs> tidal lab number. But the idea is that if you have an internal structure, you, it can respond to an external field and change the energy. And when you change the energy for a long enough time, you accumulate the, the phase is different from the GR and, and depending on how much energy. So the key is the SNR square is delta E over, is delta E, is proportional to delta E. So the more energy you put in, the better you can uh, detect it, which makes sense. I mean, if you think about it, instead of black holes, just atoms, it will, the only 
question is what is that internal structure and whether you whether in actual in real in our universe you can put enough energy into these modes to be detectable so would you say that uh, the best chance of seeing this is in, let's say, supermassive black hole mergers where you have the largest possible uh, black holes and so the largest possible amount of energy that you're transferring? And so yeah, also if we're SNRs, lucky and hopefully. we have something that is 10 times more stronger than GW15 or 914. We write the so just to uh, put. No, no, no. Yeah, so probably, I mean, everything is big, right? <laughs> uh, yes, so, but they have, they also yeah, have to I be close. To the mass. Yes, yeah. yes, so, but they have to be close enough and they have to be in the frequency range of the, of the detector. So usually in, in terrestrial experiments, these supermassive. Well, Lisa, should, should this yes, future. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, the same physics that you have now in LIGO, you will have in LISA for yeah. 10 to 6, yeah. but with SNR bigger by a factor 10 to 3. Okay. Because they are very far, but they are so massive that yes. they will increase. So the basically, SNR. this experiment is like it's doing a spect spectroscopy for you, a black hole spectroscopy for you uh, and if you have a, a model for the spectrum you can predict the result of the experiment oh yeah yeah sorry uh, do we expect uh, many of them or i mean this is the private uh, of lisa you expect a lot of things no no because, uh, because also it, the horizon yeah. would be cosmological so yeah sure them also at very high ratio uh, that's the rationale for uh, for this. Uh, okay, maybe maybe it's a good time to yeah, view uh, the floor for uh, some of your points. Yeah, sure. Uh, I was uh, okay. First of all, uh, saying that probably two charge systems are uh, worth uh, having a closer look because they they we know everything about them and we can use them as toy models for. Uh, averaging and uh, maybe uh, three charge systems are a little bit better uh, in this respect because they, they have to do something with black holes but uh, I'm not sure that we have the same uh, uh, power uh, technical power in uh, computing uh, and also uh, it's not clear that uh, anyway these uh, supersymmetric state BPS states uh, are uh, the ones that we want to study and probably uh, systems that are not supersymmetric like uh, the one that uh, Pierre was talking about or today uh, we had two talks about uh, this whole skin skin solution but I'm not sure that in this case uh, how far we can go I mean uh, it's really uh, hard to imagine while uh, yeah going back to this uh, issue of uh, Black hole formation evaporation in high energy collision uh, detail is also there. And uh, we had a paper with uh, uh, Bali and collaborators a few years ago, and we took on, on that with uh, Andrea and uh, Gabriele. And clearly, uh, we, we do expect formation of, uh, I mean, classical formation of what we, we call black hole in the high energy collision. And uh, I think. It, we can explode this direction. That's my, especially because of uh, these uh, properties of graviton. That high multiplicity uh, uh, scattering can be computed uh, using uh, soft theorems and uh, uh, structure of this kind. So we we can really study or address issues that uh, look uh, looked very hard to address a uh, few years ago. Uh, by now. Address these kind of collision or uh, yeah, in, in string theory. Yeah, the for, for instance, uh, the, the scattering process of a large uh, number of uh, soft gravitons, uh, not necessarily in, in string theory, but using uh, double copy or which uh, in string theory is uh, KLT in a sense, uh, can be addressed. Uh, 
definitely at low order in uh, perturbation theory, uh, but sometimes uh, you can uh, try and uh, exponentiate what uh, you get. Yeah, I don't know if. Uh, yeah. I think one of the big issues with super tubes is that, again, if you want to understand the whole phase space, you know, you, you hit a super tube with something, it moves into a nearby one and then it emits. And from a CFT perspective, if I'm just to do, if I, if I have to put my CFT hat and to compute, you know, what's going on, I need to compute a four point function of two heavy, which are different, two heavy operators, which are different and one and, and two light. Yeah. And so far, all the calculations I have done, you know, everybody and their brother has all, have always been, you know, you freeze the background, you freeze the microstate geometry, and then you look at calculations in a, in a, a super gravity uh, no, oriented no, 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 picture no, no, where I, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, momentum W. I mean, it's vertex operator in a hydraulic string and uh, you can do as many as you want of this object and uh, heavy uh, different masses and uh, really it's lowest order approximation, but uh, uh, from uh, Amati, Ciofaloni, Veneziano, and uh, Gross and Mendy, et cetera, et cetera, we expect some form of exponentiation when you are at very high energies, and uh, probably uh, this is a direction that uh, should be pushed. And uh, yeah. just take the FP system where we have all the we have. We, we, we know everything about that. Uh, we can compute. Uh, uh, you, you can uh, toss uh, uh, many coins and uh, <coughs> you would form and, uh, and see what happens. And, uh... What's the probability of like, you know, filling up the whole phase space? So in the FP system, again, I have many Fourier modes. So, you know, let's suppose I start with the FP system and I hit it with something. Again, my naive intuition from D1 and 5 is that I have a modularized space of directions. I have, you know, N105, there's a dimension N105 modularized space, you know, arbitrary curves of mm -hmm. any shape I want. And um, then I hit, so not normally if I, if I punch some energy into this, it will just excite and go everywhere. I mean, yeah, if I uniformly uh, go on the phase space. In the FP system, cannot make the same calculation, cannot calculate, for example, you know, if you just, I mean, because the phase space of D1 and 5 can be mapped to the FP phase space. And then in principle, I could ask that if I have a, an FP which has, like, you know, mode number five in you know some harmonic uh, uh, study and definitely the, no, the behavior will be uh, it's somewhat chaotic in a sense because i mean uh, so could yeah. you do to some kind of toy model of merger and then understanding uh does it look like black hole formation is there a even numerically yeah. right if you know how to set it no, up no, and no, then no. There's equations uh, to, the problem with uh, this is that uh, clearly you can do it at lower than perturbation theory in string theory. And then uh, you can try and argue for exponentiation of these uh, analysis, but- uh, yes, so for large, yes. large merger, that's not, not something- uh, that's not do. What can you get? I'm just wondering, I mean, you know, let's suppose you could do the calculation. What would be the result? You know, what kind of result one expects to get? I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I, I may, may, maybe I don't understand the calculation. First of all, uh, for instance, you can try and uh, uh, make a uh, prediction about the gravitational wave signal that is produced in uh, some kind of a merger of this kind, because uh, uh, you can study one point function of uh, uh, light state in a, in a process in which you have heavy states that uh, Collide and merge. So the, 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 this we uh, we've been doing. So uh, and clearly, the, there are uh, typically uh, stringy feature uh, that uh, uh, come out and. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe in view of time. Uh, Maybe I'll ask the panelists if they have uh, some 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 immediate thing. I don't know, R Rami. Maybe if you if you had something that you still wanted to really say. I mean, you. I think maybe you said everything you wanted to in in reaction to I, to others. Uh, to say no, 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 no. That's can fine. That's fine. Can I can Follow, I yeah? maybe try to comment on yeah. what uh, Rami said? Actually, it's for me to to see if I understand your point, also to connect uh, uh, to some other point that we made. Uh, so, if I understand correctly, what you are saying is. Um, if the black hole is no fundamental and, and there are, uh, and then I mean, there are microstructure. So for me, the information paradox tells me, or the majority tells me that the black hole has to have some structure. All right. Okay. So but, that's my. Story. Okay. But so I, uh, if I understand correctly, if there is some structure, I can try to excite it out of equilibrium. Okay. And it can happen, if I understand correctly, this can happen in two ways. One is, 
I can excite, say, the fundamental degrees of freedom. And I guess I'm thinking, for example, about a neutron star. For yes. a neutron star, you can either excite the collective mode, like the fluid mode right. that you said, or you could also excite the fundamental degrees of freedom inside the, the nuclear matter. But in the first case, I mean, these are the fundamental degrees of freedom, you will need very high frequency uh, modes. Yes, right? so I would expect that you, if you compare to neutron stars, you would ex uh, excite some collective modes. Okay, so because, because I think this is also related with what Nick yes, was saying. And so, also, if you, for some reason, excite some of the fundamental modes, the energy would diffuse to the collective modes. Okay, right? but then uh, taking the neutron star uh, correspondence, yes. If a I, neutron star is not that much different from a uh, black hole, right? The size, the uh, the only thing is the the entropy. But uh, so my question, I guess, is yes. if I excite the collective modes, yes. essentially, I'm, for a neutron star, I'm taking the hydrodynamical limit, right. right? So in the end, what I'm exciting is the the thermodynamical limit of my system, exactly. Right? Which, as we discussed before, most likely is the black hole. So should in, I expect the quasi no, of a black hole? No, then? in equilibrium, the, the the thermodynamic limit is the black hole. But out, if you are able to prove some of the structure, then it's it's there is a difference. Yeah, I'm not sure if the collective modes is probing the structure or you will need very high frequency no. modes to probe. The, no, no, it will not but tell you what the microstates are or detail the information about the fundamental uh, degrees of freedom, but it will just tell you that there is something there in addition to GR. That's probably the the best that you can do as far as I can I want tell. actually aren't this mode very similar to the quasi-normal mode of the black hole because I mean, yeah, it it's, looks to me that we should be no no the the quasi-normal modes the, right the, take a neutron star and go make it more and more compact it, it has two branches right, the, the, of the modes right so the, what I'm talking about are the analogs of the fluid modes right. and when the object is very compact they decouple the two branches decouple. Yeah. One is just telling you about the internal structure, and the other is the space time mode, which will probably be the same as a black right. hole with exponentially small deviations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, that's But that's a very good point, you know. I mean, rotating black holes have, uh, you know, these uh, uh, near superannian modes that are probably uh, yeah, very different uh, because they are close to the horizon rather than uh, the standard prompt uh, ring down mode, which are closer to the photosphere. So, uh, in a sense, in a, in a rotating black hole, yeah. yeah, there are different branches of uh, quasi normal modes. Once that are uh, yeah, yeah but, uh, so that's way. all associated with space time outside the black hole. Yeah, but the, the, as I was arguing uh, actually in my talk, that if you are very near extremality, there is a branch of uh, quasi normal nodes which are very uh, much localized uh, near the horizon. Uh, okay, but uh, unfortunately, we probably don't have extremal black holes in uh, our well, universe. Uh, extremally rotate, not, not charge, uh, rotation extremely. It's probably also. No, it's, uh, uh, actually, many of these observed black holes are, are compatible with uh, A.9.0.9 uh, uh, or. Yeah. This is also maybe uh, maybe I'm looking at Paolo. This is something that's in astronomy. It's not most of them are right? equal point right. seven. Yeah. Uh, there are by yeah, but there are observations. Yeah. No, no, no. Same as the one as the spin open many of the yeah. Uh, but okay. Right. So. No, no, no. At least not so far. So maybe uh, okay. So in view of time, uh, getting the stink eye from Nick. Uh, <laughs> Oh. Uh, maybe I'll ask uh, the panel members if they have a last something to say, last, last, statement, last statement or, or <laughs> question. I can tell you why I hate Joseph. boson stars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joseph can tell us why he hates bosons. Can we bosons. appeal to the jury and uh, please be... 
No, it's not bosons of stars. It's in general, like, you know, there are all these, it, there are all these, there are all these low energy effective models. Uh, and, you know, it's not just bosons of stars. It's, you know, Jackie Teitelbaum gravity, for example, and you know, all these, all these, like, you know, um, theories, which are like, you know, theories where, where one can calculate. Uh, but, you know, essentially, just because you can calculate there, you know, it, 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 there's something called the Lampos principle, you know, you have some theories where, where you can calculate, so you can build a boson star, you can build a Grava star, it's easy, you can work in JT gravity, it's easy, but essentially, if you do that, you ignore a huge amount of physics, and, but in particular, you know, for the boson star, you know, first of all, okay, when you have two black holes and you merge, you know, you need boson stars of like, you know, you, you need one, boson star of one field and then you need another field and you know you need, you need the third field to get the, the combined object to be a boson star so it's basically it's, it's a toy model which i think is just chopping off you know too much physics to be to be good but joseph and, you can turn this argument around against fuzzballs right? yes. no fuzzballs are top down i'm just cal cal calculating uh, yeah, top down. what we are doing for observations at least so. no for observations i no, for observations basically no 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 but that's the whole point so fuzzballs have a way of existing at every for every mass Boson stars only exist, you know, give me one Lagrangian, they exist for one mass. You give me a second Lagrangian, they exist for a, for a second mass. If you want to replace all the black hole in the universe, you need an infinite number of fields of all the possible masses. And, you know, that one you don't have. So, in a sense, fastballs are finding this mechanism. But it's also the, the, it's also the spherical symmetry. So, for example, in Jacky tidal bomb gravity, again, if you do ADS two physics, you know, you, you, you do ADS two, you find in JT, okay, you have you can blow up the UV, you can blow up the infrared. But if you look at the full string theory, you find that in ADS two, there's all, all these nice physics, you know, the, all these caps, you know, which, which which exist at the bottom. They are dual to all the states. The states have a mass gap. The dual CFT is not topological. If you just do JT gravity and ignore all the string theory, you're, you, you just get garbage. And I think that's it's, it's similar. So if you throw away all these non perturbative degrees of freedom, if you throw away all the fields, if you throw away all the information. So I think it's good to find a balance, you know, where you can work on one pen hand, but, you know, still keep the interesting physics. And I think, I mean, one, one of the things which, which I'm, I'm very, very proud of fastballs, you know, in general, and, you know, of the, of the work which people in, in, in our community have done for the past, you know, 15 years or even more, I'm getting old. Um, they said, you know, essentially all these pieces of physics came out and were discovered. And, you know, I didn't expect them. None of them was supposed to be there. You know, they all came out and, you know, they all came out in the right place with the right coefficients and the right, you know, everything kind of came out in, in good pieces. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of new physics there. And if you do boson stars and, or if you do JT gravity to understand, you know, fundamental ADS to physics, for example, you just throw away all this stuff. I mean, you just, you just completely ignoring that completely and, you know, and I, th I don't think, I think people should take this into, into account. So if people come with a fancy boson star, which has like, you know, some extra fields, like, you know, like Rami is doing, you know, to take all this string on the you know, some extra stringy modes or something to account for all this new physics, hat down, no problem. Sorry? Not the boson star. No, 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 but if you come with some effective Lagrangian, which takes into account all these new extra physics, and gives me the, the gives me the features which yeah, I find ma microscopically from a macroscopic perspective. Head down, you know, at like least find the solution for yeah. every mass. Yeah. yeah. So Rami, yeah. So Rami's solution. Least, I, I see your point, but I agree. But I think it starts from the wrong things that I mean, boson stars are by no means made to replace black holes. I mean, even even at that theoretical level. That's mm -hmm. for the reason you said. And, I mean. It's really not uh, the purpose uh, for them. Mm -hmm. it's, My a straw, it's a straw man that you want to shoot down. Uh, so no, I don't know. I've seen something to compare to GR. So you have to give them something that they can actually yeah. compare to GR. In this sense, I think they are complementary because it's a model in which, for example, you can say if I have two boson stars, what will be the end state of what is the multiple moments of this entire mm -hmm. model? My, my problem, I guess, is. Um, is related with the very first question. So would it make more sense to take one of these particular solutions from multi-centers or the bubbles that Pierre was discussing the other day and compute observables, even if we know that it's just a partial answer because it's a, it's a class of solutions? I mean, what is the difference it's between top down. doing it's this top down. It's, and it's computing crucial. the same for boson stars? It's top down, oh. it's crucial. So people who do, there's a similar problem, people who do ADS condensed matter. So people who do ADS condensed matter, they have two ways. They can do ADS condensed Sorry, boson stars are top down too. I mean, there is a Lagrangian. It's just- a yeah, No, 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 there's not top down. It's a Lagrangian coming from nowhere, which is not a quantized theory of gravity. It's just some Lagrangian Wait, that by how, hand. Which how high is loops. your top? No, 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 no. <laughs> top down meaning like, you know, honest to goodness, top down. So 
honest to goodness, you know, string theory embedding. So just to give you an example, people who but do ADS they are not even bottom up, right? I mean, bottom up to me is I just create, I don't know, multiple moments and look for them. No, no, right? no, that's crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, bottom up, no, bottom up is still, you know, calculations, you know. Sorry, you no, know, it's a good calculation. I'm very happy with bottom up. You know, if it's a good bottom up, which captures the top-down features and puts them in a good, in a, in a good framework, I'm very happy with that. So if you know, Rami's model, for example, is like one one kind of step, you know, he puts an, another term. <laughs> He puts another term kind of by hand. I mean, okay, the whole response should be there. No, he, no, hand no hand it, it, it should be there. But then, you know, you could also argue there's a guy to the six, guy to the eight, like, you know, double winding. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So people could put, but uh, again, that's a model which has the right features which come, which, are, which match the top down. So I'm very happy with the bottom up model which matches the top down. I'm very happy. So you know, if you, if you have extra fields which have extra extra stuff, I'll be very happy with that. But the problem is, you know, bosom stars don't have that at this point. So, but uh, again, just give, just to show you why why this is wrong. So people who do ADS condensed matter in ADS condensed matter, there are two crowds. There are top design people, you know, Gauntlet. You know, he takes you know, gauge supergravity on like you know the most complicated possible manifold to get some Lagrangian. He mimics a condensed mod matter model with it. But you know, it comes from string theory, from some you know gauge supergravity or some horrible Calab law, and then he gets some predictions. There, then there are some other people who basically just take whatever Lagrangian they want. I mean, they just throw terms in the Lagrangian. They come up with a couple of Lagrangians, and they say, my Lagrangian matches, you know, this and this and this and this and this. And then you can show that the top-down models, they have some features which are all universal. And the bottom-up models are just missing them completely. I mean, just all, they have, the bottom-up models are all, all over the map, and they give incorrect physics. And those, the, the, the people like Gondes, for example, they argue that one should not use bottom-up models which are made up. One should use only very special ones which match the top-down predictions. I mean, if so, your if you if you wish both uh, boson stars to match fast balls, then I mean, of course they fail. I, I don't think that that's no, but there should be another purpose. model. Maybe there's another model which involves a few other fields which matches the physics we find I mean, for fast balls. That's people, what I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a particular fan, but just like mm -hmm. to put things in context. People who work on boson stars. Uh, they don't even care about the information loss paradox or the fast or whatever. <laughs> their main their problem. <laughs> sorry. No, no, but you see, you see. I know, I mean, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's really a different, uh, mm -hmm. motiv even a motivation. Some of them, the motivation is, for example, I want to solve the dark matter problem. The dark matter problem can be, the dark matter can be a boson field, which is very light to be detectable in experiments, mm -hmm. but it could collapse and form this object. Or maybe the halo at the center of galaxy is a boson, uh, a boson mm -hmm. condensate, which is a boson star. Mm -hmm. And I want just to study the dynamics of that. I mean, to me, that is a top-down approach, right? I mean, I have a my Lagrangian. Okay, it does mm -hmm. not uh, come from string theory, but who cares? I mean, that's a phenom, <laughs> but, but that's, that's still phenom. No, but I mean, if you want to replace black holes again, you know, since this is what we've been trying to do, you know, to build echoes. If you want to build echoes, you know, there should be some bottom-up model. I'm very happy with bottom-up models for echoes, but, you know, I just want a bottom-up model which incorporates all these ingredients which come out. We agree with this. They don't replace black holes. Okay, so maybe maybe it's a good time to <laughs> <laughs> to wrap up. I think uh, we can conclude that there's a lot of uh, a lot of work to still be done on both sides, top down and bottom up, as usual, right? Uh, <laughs> but maybe maybe we have some ideas now, right, as to where to go. So thanks to the panelists. Thanks. Right. So